Hello friends, this video on chemical kinetics part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The next, in fact the most important factors that impact the rate of reaction is the concentration. On the left hand side if you see the more concentration, right hand side less concentration. Right? The target is still same. Now one car is being assigned to break this tower. In this case instead of one car we have almost nine cars. Obviously, this will be fast, right? Nine cars can break the star more easily than one car. So here we have less concentration, sorry, more concentration on the left and less concentration on the right. Thinking from the car and the tower example, right? The more the cars we have, more easily they can break the towers. The more faster the reaction will be. Left hand side, we have less concentration of the cars. It will take more time to break the tower. So the reaction will be slow and here it will be fast reaction. We will take some examples of this and if you see, if you increase the concentration, increase the concentration that means more molecules, that means more collision. More collision that means more probability of getting product. Less concentration on the left hand side, that means less collision, less number of collisions. Less number of collisions means less probability of getting product. So the rate is slow here and it is faster. A good example is, uh, let's suppose we take this zinc in both the beaker, same amount of zinc in the same form and uh, we'll take one MSCL in this uh, flask and in this flask we'll take 20 MSCL. You see this is higher concentration, this is low concentration, right? This is my low concentration, this is high concentration. Now I'll put this 1 MSCL and 10 MSCL in this beaker and let's see what happens. If you see 1 MSCL you put in this beaker, the reaction starts. You put 20 MSCL in this beaker, the reaction starts. But if you see, the rate of reaction is different. You can try this in the lab. You see, this the rate of reaction is less. The hydrogen gas coming out is less. In this case, more and more hydrogen gas is coming out. So on the left hand side, we had low concentration of HCl and few hydrogen gas came out. On the right hand side, we had high concentration of HCl, right? Zinc is same in both cases. More and more hydrogen gas came out. So if you see, that means the reaction rate is more on the right hand side, the reaction rate is less here, right? More rate of reaction, less rate of reaction. Less concentration, high concentration. One more good example can be a candle. If you see the candle, what happens is, the carbon actually it burns in the presence of oxygen to give carbon dioxide. Correct. Now oxygen comes from air. So if you somehow close this with a beaker, you take this beaker and you cover this. Once you cover this, the oxygen is limited. After some time, the oxygen will get exhausted, right? The co concentration of oxygen will go down, right? The concentration of oxygen will go down. If you see, it will start diminishing. And finally, it will go off. Let me repeat this equation. This is the candle. It is getting sufficient air from the surrounding. It is working fine. You cover this with this uh, beaker. The oxygen will get consumed after some time. The candle light, if you see, it will get diminished and then it will go off. You see, that means the rate of reaction is depending on here the concentration of oxygen. Earlier, the concentration of oxygen was more. It was perfectly fine. Now, the concentration of oxygen is getting diminished. So, the lighting is also less and finally it goes off. Correct? So, the reaction has a huge, the rate of reaction has a huge impact on concentration of the reactants. Since for a given reaction, for example, A plus B gives C plus D, the concentration had a huge, huge role. So, chemists thought, okay, let's focus on the concentration first, right, on the impact for the rate of reaction, right? So, we'll be talking about how concentration is impacting reaction rate. That is what we'll be focusing on in this slides. Now, this chemist, they found that the chemical re reaction at a given temperature may depend, may depend on concentration of one or more reactant. That means it may depend on the concentration of A or concentration of B or C or D. 
correct so the representation of the rate of reaction in terms of concentration of reactant is called rate law so they came up with something called rate law and rate law is nothing but my representation of rate of reaction in terms of in terms of concentration of reactant and that is called rate law correct it's also called rate law or it's also called rate equation it's also called a rate expression three different thing rate law rate expression rate law rate expression rate equation right and we have seen in the past example that the rate of the reaction decrease with the passage of time right the moment the concentration is decreasing the rate of reaction decrease we have solved one numerical also right so we can say that my rate of reaction is directly proportional to concentration of reactant and this is what we have seen in one of the examples in the past few slides correct that is something experimentally it has been seen now let's suppose there is a reaction a a plus small b b give small c or let's put the value here small a a small b b small c c and small d b that means i am putting some stoichiometric coefficient here that means a moles small a moles of capital a plus small b moles of capital b gives small moles c moles of capital c plus small d moles of capital d now experimentally it is seen that based on experiments please note this is all experimental experimentally it is seen that the rate is proportional to reactants a and b but instead of 2 to the power a or b it is to the power x or y this x and y are experimental value they may be equal to a and b may not be equal to a and b right x and y are not equal to a and b always something they are and they are experimental value and rate till now what we have seen rate is nothing but my uh, change d minus of change of reactant with time or you can say in this case minus 1 by a uh, change of a by change of t or minus 1 by b change of b by change of t or plus 1 by c change of c by change of t plus or plus 1 by small d change of capital d by change of this is what we have seen this is all rate right this is the same rate actually the same rate we are trying to write in terms of concentration so experimentally we seen that the rate we have seen that one question the rate of the reaction decrease because the concentration of the reactant decrease so we concluded that the rate of reaction is dependent on concentration of reactant please note it's a concentration of reactant only only reactants not the product correct so rate law is nothing but we, we represent the rate of reaction rate of reaction in terms of concentration of reactants and experimentally it is seen that rate is directly proportional to concentration of a and b that is my reactant but the power is not the stoichiometric coefficient it is some values x and y and that is experimentally formed so this form of equation is called differential rate equation so in this case since it is a proportional i want to give a constant value so i can say that rate is k of e to the power x e to the power y correct so my this k is called rate constant and this whole equation is called rate equation instead of rate i can write minus dr by dt also because this is nothing but change of reactant with a minus sign by because the reactant is going down but k of 8 to the power x 
b to the power y. This is called differential rate law or differential rate equation. Correct? This k is my what? k is my rate constant. So you see concentration is changing, the reaction rate is changing. And please note, these are all experimental values. Let me repeat again. These are all experimental values. This X and Y are experimental value. Correct? So you want to define the rate law. Rate law is nothing but the expression. It is the expression in which the reaction rate is given in terms of molar concentration of the reactant with each term raised to some power, which may or may not be the stoichiometric coefficient. I told X and Y may or may not be A and B, generally it is not, right, of the balanced reaction. So that is my rate law. Rate law is nothing but the expression in which the reaction rate is given in terms of molar concentration of reactants. Correct. So how do you find rate law? How do you find the rate law? For example, let's take one example. I have this uh, NO, this is react with O2, NO2, this is my balanced reaction. Correct. So in this case, my rate will be K times concentration of NO to the power X, concentration of y, O2 to the power Y. And XY has to be experimental. Correct? Because I told X and Y has to be found experimental. So let's do an experiment. So let's do an experiment one here. Let's suppose experiment one, and let's suppose we this is my amount of NO. We'll put here, this is amount of oxygen. We'll put here, and this is uh, rate of formation of NO2 we'll put here right this is my experiment in case of experiment 1 let's take some x concentration of NO and some x concentration of NO2 and let's suppose the formation of NO2 uh, came out to be 0 0.02 moles per liter per second just assuming some values in experiment 2, what we can do is, we can double the concentration of NO and keep the concentration of O to be same and then let's suppose it becomes 0 0.08 mole per liter. This is all experimental, right? This is rate of formation of NO2, experimental value, experimental data. Like all these are experimental data, experimental data only. These two we are changing and this we are calculating. So if you see, from X to 2X we made and this becomes 2 to 8. Correct. What does it mean? Sorry, it, it becomes four times two to eight. Two became eight. That is four times. Correct. So x became two x. It became. But if you see, it's two time only. But if you say x square here, let's suppose it's going to two x square. Then I can say x square is four x square, right? Two times, four times actually. Here. See, there's x here, there's x here, so instead of x, let's take some term c here. Let this be c, this be c, this be c, and this be c. Correct. So, here we have seen that c became 2c, but the rate became 4 times. That means c became 2c, that means it has to be in the square form. That means x has to be 2, because NO we have made it from c, b, c c square to 2 c square you see that is nothing but 4 c square right so that means 4 times and that is what is happening right it becomes 4 times that means x has to be let us repeat the same experiment third time here do not change the amount of NO let this be c only but O2 let this be 2 c now let us suppose the value came out to be 0 0.04 moles per liter per second we will take some numericals on this to understand just Telling you the concepts. Let's assume this, this is what happens. Now, if you compare one and three, uh, the concentration of NO is same, but the concentration of oxygen has become double, and the rate also became double. 
correct that means it is to the power 1 see c becomes 2c or c square becomes 2c square or c cube becomes 2c cube right only three like this x i mean the possibilities are like this for the value of x now in this case 2 to 8 4 times jump so this is 2 times jump this is 4 times jump this is 8 times jump since there was a 4 times jump that means i am talking about this scenario that means the power is 2 so the power was 2 in this second case from 2 to 4 0.02 to 0 0.04 2 times jump this is also 2 times jump right that means 2 times jump that means i am talking about the power 1 that means y plus 1 so with this equation with this equation i can say that the rate is nothing but k into concentration of no to the power 2 o2 to the power and that is what we can conclude using this experiment please note these are all experimental values rate law all the values are experimental values just by looking at the equation you can't say what is the value of x and y this is how typically we find the rate law for a given equation we generally do this experiment and we find the value of x and y let's take some examples or let's understand why do we need rate law equation see as i told that the impact can be different for different molecules for example again the target is to break this tower break the tower that is the target now this yellow taxi may need 10 hits to break this this jeep may need 5 hits and this truck may need only one hit so if you see the impact of the truck is more impact of the jeep is less sedan is all the more less so in this case if you add concentration of or if you add more truck here then the rate will increase like anything but if you add let's suppose you already have one truck one sedan one jeep and the target is to break the tower and they are breaking it and they're taking some seconds or some minutes to break the tower the moment you add one more jeep sorry one more truck the speed will be very much increased but if you add one more sedan the speed will not be increased that much or if you add one uh, jeep the speed will be increased moderately so if you see there are three different reactants right but again some reactant has more contribution some has less contribution correct more contribution and some has less contribution so if you increase the concentration of something which has more contribution the reaction rate will increase all the more thus everything is not having equal contribution so if you see in this case just by experiment they found that for this the rate was concentration of CSCl3 to the power 1 and concentration of chlorine to the power half that means chlorine is having less contribution for this reaction right typically in our life also if you see so if you want to increase the rate of reaction using rate law we know that CSCl3 has more scope so we'll increase the concentration of CSCl3 more than increasing the concentration of chlorine correct so in this case also we know truck is causing breaking this tower easily so if i have to add one vehicle i have a choice between truck sedan and jeep obviously i'll go for truck because i know that the moment i add truck the rate of reaction will increase right the time it takes to break the tower will be less same thing here if you know the rate law properly if you want to moderate the reaction you want to increase the rate of reaction you know that this is the guy i am supposed to increase if you want to decrease the rate of reaction you know that this is the guy which i am to decrease the concentration to control the reaction so to control the rate of reaction it is very important to know the rate law for the reaction thank you visit examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online tests get pre-study materials find tutors and mentors and much more thanks once again